I don't think that there has been a smartphone in the news as much for all the wrong reasons since the Note 7 as the Pixel 2 XL has. Screen issues, software issues, quality issues, etc. While it's still early to give you a concrete idea on these and the device as a whole, we have spent some time with the device to give you a preview on what you can expect from it. Let's start with the elephant in the room, shall we? The display like the phone is manufactured by LG. It's a 6 inch POLED display with Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for protection, as well as an aspect ratio of 18 is to 9 and 2880 by 1440 pixels of resolution. Yes, the blue shift in the display does exist. However, it seems that the amount of shift varies, and in this particular example that we shot, it seems to be much lesser than the ones we had tried at some stores. However, considering that almost 90%, if not more, of our use with the phone is straight at us and not at weird angles, I don't think this is a big issue. What some people should be more worried about is the burn-in issue and even that wasn't present in this review unit that our fellow blogger kindly lent to us for a shoot. Perhaps it's not been long enough since he has had it for about 4 days or so only, but so far it has not exhibited the issues. The sRGB color profile does look a bit muted and less saturated compared to most other implementations on the market and the vivid color mode doesn't really help much either but is something Google can easily fix and has already promised to release an update with a more public friendly color profile so to speak. The bezels aren't all that big as many people may be describing online. In fact considering the dual front facing speakers, I feel it's pretty impressive that the bezels are only this much. The 3D glass looks really beautiful in person and the phone is pretty manageable overall in terms of footprint. While we still haven't come across the black and white or panda variant as some people call it, the black variant does have a unique texture to the back. Something that feels like a more subtle version of what OnePlus brought with the sandstone finish years ago. It's not in your face but it adds a nice feel and improves grip. If you're looking for eye candy then the Panda might be better, but if you intend on using without a case, then perhaps the black variant is better, especially considering how Google says that fabric dye can transfer onto the phone paint. The speaker setup was pretty nice but did feel a bit underwhelming in terms of volume outputted, but it's too early to pass a final judgement. The software is as fluid as ever and you'd be surprised to find out that it has just 4GB of RAM under the hood if you try the phone first without reading the specifications. The Snapdragon 835 also ensures that things remain as smooth and effortless as possible. We haven't explored much of the Oreo goodness yet but we will be doing so in our full review once we get the unit. Perhaps the one thing that Google was expected to live up to the most and may have actually pulled it off is the camera. The dynamic range is truly the best out there and although manufacturers may have cut down on the gap, it's still pretty tangible especially when it comes to sharpness and detailing which is exceptional albeit at the cost of some extra noise especially in low light conditions. The Pixel 2 and 2 XL have identical 12 megapixel sensors with larger f1.8 aperture and OIS compared to last year, but the sensor size is now smaller at 1 by 2.6 inches and the Pixel size 2 is a tad bit smaller at 1.4 microns. Still on the whole, we only gain a better camera across both devices, especially if you look at just how wonderful the portrait mode is using a single camera. It can even put the best of dual camera phones to shame and once the Pixel Visual Core is unlocked with Android 8.1, it should only get much better. The portrait mode works exceptionally well for the front camera as well and I think there's no other device that can match the Pixel's front camera even in terms of pure dynamic range and detailing let alone the portrait mode. This is in spite of the fact that it's still the same 8 megapixel f2.4 1.14 micron 1 by 3.2 inch sensor from last year. The battery capacity of 3520mAh seems to hold charge pretty well and we'll discuss in detail during our review. The phone is IP67 rated for protection against dust and water and the USB Type-C port supports power delivery 2.0 and USB 3.1 transfer speeds. However, Google has removed the headphone jack which they flaunted just a year ago. The Pixel 2 is already on sale and those who pre-ordered it are already getting their devices. The 2XL on the other hand is still up for pre-order until the 14th and will go on sale the following day. You can purchase both from the link in the description below. Stay tuned for more content on the Pixel devices in the coming days. That's it for this video guys. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get the latest updates from us. Thanks for watching this video. See you again in the next one.